Okay, let me talk about limit cycle in this slide. Uh, usually for um, walking model, we, the main interest is to find out the periodic solution. Okay, for rhythmic wheel, it's a very simple case, so you can find out a steady state solution by hand. But most of the case, you should um, find it, find the periodic gate numerically by trial and errors. So um, the issues are: Are these solution repeated? Okay, how can we find it? How can we formulate them? So for this uh, specific uh, example, for the Rimmis wheel um, solution, theta and omega, you can draw the uh, response for the theta over time and omega over time. Okay, so for theta, as we have mentioned in the earlier, so it's going to be uh, just monotonic increase from minus alpha to the alpha. Okay, how about the omega? Is omega also increase from uh, omega naught to omega minus um, the, before collision? Well, um, Suppose this is a simple uh, inverted pendulum. What would happen is you have an initial speed, and maybe at the very, uh, very uh, top, you will actually uh, reduce your speed, and then you will actually accelerate again, so you can increase your speed, kind of thing. So, uh, starting from omega naught, you have a little bit reduced speed, and actually gain the speed up to the point um, you have a omega minus. Okay. So that's the graph for the theta over time. When we define the phase space or phase portrait, this is the graph of the old state in terms of um, theta. I mean, it, it's a graph for the state uh, x-axis as one state and y-axis at usually the time derivative of it. So, for example, if I have a theta as an x-axis and or omega as a y-axis, that's the phase space. So try to think about how I can draw this uh, time trajectory for theta and omega in phase space. Okay, starting with minus alpha and omega naught, so minus alpha and omega naught, okay? And the theta uh, will start from minus alpha to the alpha, so theta might uh, change this direction. And omega naught is going to be increased to the omega minus, but with a slight decrease in the middle. So maybe the phase space the uh, trajectory for theta and omega will uh, looks like this. Okay. So what will happen here? So what will happen at omega minus? The collision occurs. So omega, um, there's omega plus, reduced omega plus as a factor of eta. Right, and if this fits with the if is uh, if this value is the same as omega naught, which will turn into a steady state value. So um, after collision, you're you have a new stance leg, so you can actually switch the state variable. So from plus alpha, you can switch to the minus alpha angle, right? So you have a discrete change from here to here. Okay, so that's um, the uh, phase space trajectory of your theta and omega, your solution actually. Suppose that you have you are starting from different um, initial value like omega not uh, prime, okay, and then uh, you have a trajectory over state space uh, space. Um, phase space and have a you have an omega minus here and then once your collision occurs you will reduce at a certain amount and um, once you um, when you have a collision uh, you will switch the new stance leg so your angle has a discrete change from alpha to the minus alpha and then suppose that your initial omega has been increased over one step to omega prime like a greater than that that means as you um, repeat your uh, step, uh, you actually diverge. You just keep increase your speed this way, right? Okay, suppose you have an um, initial value like this, minus alpha and very uh, a lot smaller than omega naught, and then you can increase through the uh, single support phase, and at this point you have a collision, so you have a reduced omega plus, and uh, you can switch from um, the initial value of the uh, new stance space, stance leg. So suppose your val initial value started here and then uh, moved up to there. And then with that new uh, initial state, you can have another uh, step, like a single support phase and collision, and then swap, swap your um, uh, 
so stance leg value okay so after repeating this as you can imagine maybe you can actually approaching to this value the the steady state value so this is a kind of converging example so the limit cycle is kind of like kind of this one like a close trajectory in phase space like a theta versus omega or x versus the velocity having a property that at least one other trajectory spirals into it okay so for example this light blue um, trajectory doesn't uh, spiral into the steady state uh, cycle however this uh, dark navy trajectory as time goes by will actually reach uh, converges to this uh, steady state trajectory so this is a limit cycle and um, to examine if this um, initial guess will converge to the uh, steady state, uh, I, sh I should actually, you know, perform all the simulations of the single support phase and the, the collision phase and um, exchange the uh, state variable and so on. However, if I only focus on the initial value and those um, next steps initial value it will be a lot simpler to examining it so if i'm just focusing on what will happen for the initial value and its uh, result um, next steps initial value it will be easier so Poincaré section is a um, lower dimensional subspace of the limit cycle that only um, uh, has the uh, to, which is used to examine the periodic orbit uh, existence so intersection of the orbit periodic or orbit in the state space of uh, with a lower dimensional subspace okay so here this line uh, originally I have a, a two-dimensional state uh, space state space and this is a reduced uh, subspace because it's a line so this is line uh, examining um, the initial state and the uh, next steps initial state could be an example for the Poincaré section and if I could find a point where um, this uh, value will uh, return to its original value uh, that's what we call the fixed point so fixed point is a solution for f of x is equal to x okay so it actually repeat back it to its initial its initial um, starting point so that's placed on the limit cycle is what we call the fixed point so if you type in the limit cycle in the Google image, you uh, one of the popular um, the image will be like this. So this is a phase portrait or phase space um, plot of Van der Poel oscillator. This is the equations of motion. And the x-axis is the x and y-axis is the x dot, the velocity. So uh, as you could see here, this uh, thick line it seems like a periodic gate, a steady state gate. So it can just um, has a, a repeated uh, periodic cycle. And if you're starting from somewhere here, it will actually spur into this. And also if you start there, it will actually spur into this um, periodic gate cycle, the steady state gate, the steady state cycle. So this is, uh, is a limit cycle which has at least one other trajectory spiral into it. So this, um, this the thick trajectory is a limit cycle. And Poincaré section is the, like here is again the two dimensional. So if you just draw a line, an inter intersection between the periodic orb orbit, that could be a Poincaré section. So this one could be a Poincaré section or the other one is a Poincaré section, whatever the intersection with this limit cycle or what we call the Poincaré section and the fixed point which has a um, you know initial value um, returning back its um, original value is a fixed point so this one this point is a fixed point and this one is could be a fixed point as well so um, when you um, have a image Google image for the limit cycle usually there's example for the 3d limits a uh, 3d trajectory and then Poincaré section here is a two-dimensional one dimensional uh, lower uh, subspace so instead of examining all those trajectory you can just examining the initial point and the, uh, what will happen for the next next reaching a point so examining if this actually matches which is a fixed point uh, you can find the periodic periodic cycle so think, uh, note that how uh, we define the limit cycle, which is the um, repeated uh, steady state cycle that actually contains one 
um, at least one other trajectory spirals into it. And Poincaré section is a, a lower dimensional subspace, usually um, focusing on the uh, point where you started and what's going to be the next point. And fixed point is where the solution for f of x is going to be equal to dx. OK, so your ultimate uh, goal will be finding a, a fixed point for general like a locomotion um, analysis. OK, the so rimless wheel is a simple case, so you can solve it by hand. But most of the case, you should do it, you know, try and enter or, or by many, um, repeated iteration. So either find the solution for x of x, f of x is going to be x, or maybe you can define the function g of x, which is fx minus x. So find the root of this g of x equals to 0. Okay, That's the fixed point. So uh, finding the root numerically is uh, one the popular method in maybe you have learned in numerical methods course for your undergrad is Newton's method. So starting with any uh, initial a random initial point, find out what's going to be the corresponding um, function value, and take the uh, slope at that point, and intersection between that slope and the x-axis is going to be your next guess. So with respect to that uh, function value, you can have another uh, derivative, and find out the intersection for that slope and the x-axis is going to be uh, your next guess. So if you keep repeating this, it will converge to the solution of the root of g of x equals to 0. So steps are guess the, uh, any random point and calculate the um, use the slope to find the next guess. So use the slope. By definition, it's going to be xi minus xi plus 1. Um, uh, g of x i over x minus x i plus 1. OK, so that's how you find out the next guess. So if you keep repeating this until you have the root. So um, Newton's method works well as far as it has um, global minimum or if you're as far as your initial guess is good enough. So the sequential point could be expressed by like your second um, point will be uh, your second point will be uh, related as your initial guess and crest funding uh, slope, and your third guess will be obtained from your second value and its slope. Okay, so uh, this is usually what we want to know: the next step's value, the unknowns, and these are all the measured value. You can actually find. Um, calculate the uh, g of x and you can actually calculate the um, um, first derivative of uh, g of x i. So if you formulate them like a p equals a x kind of form, uh, you can find out x using the pseudo inverse or the MATLAB a backslash b. OK, the a is actually the derivative of g of x, how we can find it numerically. Uh, since g of x is not given in your general like a, a walking simulation, so g of x here could be what? g of x could be the function that you solve this uh, single support phase equations of motion and the double support um, collision equations. and switch your new stand select state value that's kind of mer uh, merging to the function g of 1 x g of g g of x here okay so you should find the uh, derivative numerically so by definition if you have a g of x uh, a prime the first derivative you will have um G of, uh, and then suppose you have a G function has uh, many multiple sub function like a G of 1, G of 2, and G of M. You will have M by N, depending on uh, what are the dimensions for the X variable, M by N Jacobian matrix. How we can find this numerically? Uh, by definition, uh, for that uh, function, you have a little bit of um, deviation for the first components of the x. So suppose your x has maybe n by 1 uh, matrix. Uh, you have only one uh, first uh, x component factor deviated, having other components to be um, non-changing. So it's like your x not the nominal value, and you only have a 1, 0, 0, 0 multiplied by the epsilon only just deviating the first component of your state value uh, minus g of x naught divided by the epsilon. That's how you can numerically calculate the first components of your uh, 
uh, the derivative. Uh, for your second derivative, what's going to be the uh, round g, round x of 2? That's your, you only deviate the second components of your x n by n vector by the amount of epsilon and divide by the um, epsilon. So by doing so, you can calculate the Jacobian, the first order of time derivative, and then use that value to figure that out the next point for the Newton's method, next guess, until you actually find a fixed point.